Joffrey, Renly, Rob Stark, they're all thieves. They'll bend the knee or I'll destroy them. Hello everyone, Grandmaster Stitch here and welcome back for episode 2 in our King Tommen Baratheon playthrough. In the first episode we brought down the three minor rebellions in the Riverlands. Well, two of them were part of the Northern Rebellion who had still... Well, still had refused to bend the knee even though Rob Stark is dead and buried. Well, we don't know what happened to his body, but still, yes, we have managed to make the Tullys bend the knee and now River and belongs to the Freys. The Riverlands also now belong to Peter Baelish. I'm sorry that I was calling him Pataya Baelish in the first episode. I do it completely by accident. For those of you who have listened to the audiobook, you'll understand because uh, the legend Roy Detrice always refers to him as Pattaya Baelish and I just do it by accident. I don't even realise I'm doing it. I sometimes do it with Brienne as well when I call her Brienne thanks to uh, Roy Detrice. But yeah, he that guy is awesome at reading the, the uh, audiobooks. God bless his soul. But um, yes, anyway, so we are still at war with Stannis Baratheon and he is at war with Aegon. So we have that war to worry about once we take out um, Stannis. We've still got the Iron Islands who are refusing to heal as well who are invading the reach we have daenerys to worry about as well maybe at some point as well as the white walkers as well we did try and form an alliance with the veil vale at the end of the last episode with by betraying marcella to uh robert aaron for some reason she wasn't betrothed to the martels anymore and i thought it'd make more sense to betray them to the veil vale. As there's a chance the Martells may join Aegon, they tend to. They're also in fighting the White Walkers. And the Vale is a lot closer to home for us. And a lot closer to our enemies in the north. So I thought it'd be better to, um, yeah, bring them into the fold. They're very fresh. They've not joined in with any wars yet. Right, so let's play. But yeah, I did just notice that... Um, Lord Aemon of Riverrun has ambitions of seeing House Frey rule from the Iron Throne. So that's interesting. And then another very funny thing that I noticed was that um, the High Septon has ambitions of... Um, where is it? The Sept of Baelor. Can we go to the Sept of Baelor, please? Yes, it... He, um, the High Septon has ambitions of taming a dragon, which would be hilarious if uh, the High Sparrow managed to tame a dragon right but anyway we're bringing our royal army back home to king's landing awesome the arons are getting involved in the war that is perfect okay your and greyjoy's had something added to his treasury so right we're going to go down to the stormlands and we're going to try and bring um stannis to heal he's obviously still in the north i've not even seen him cross the neck yet so he must actually be remaining in the north and fighting the boltons for once normally he marches straight south Okay, Rhaegar has killed Quinton Martell, and Carl Jargo was fed to Queen Daenerys of Marine's Dragon, so she's keeping busy. I wonder if she'll come over at some point. Oh, okay, Lord Walder Frey has died a natural death at the age of 92. Your prisoner Catelyn is requesting audience with you. Upon meeting her before the court, she offered him to pay her ransom. How much is it, 10 gold? No, you will stay in my custody. Also... That's a good point. You guys said that I should send these prisoners to the wall. So let's have a look who we've got. We've got Benefer, who's not very interesting. So we will banish Benefer to the Night's Watch. Send. They've asked for aid. We don't want to get involved here. You can have some petty criminals. Harrion. Oh, Harrion, the lack of car hold. No, 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 no. We'll keep him. Harwin, who is obviously the old... Um... See the Kennel Master? Kenner Master's son of the uh, of House Stark, but we'll banish him to the Night's Watch as well. Who else have we got? Catelyn, we obviously can't banish to the Night's Watch, so I'm not sure what we'll do with her yet. Oh, she's got a valuable artifact, apparently. What has she got? Ah, the Crown of Winter. So, yes, we will seize that valuable artifact, please. Okay, we can't do that, which is annoying. We don't want that getting into the wrong hands. I'm not sure what to do with Gendry because he is our half-brother. Do we keep him or not? What do we do with him? Let's. I kind of don't want to send him to the wall, but we don't know who he is, so we probably should send him to the wall. I'll see what you guys think we should do. What should we do with Gendry? 
Horace. Horace Redwin obviously will keep you. You're important. Jack be Jack be looker. He's a member of the Brotherhood, isn't he? Right. We'll um banish Jack to the Night's Watch. Send a lot of men up north for them. Jonas, Sir Jonas. Not very interested, right? We will banish Sir Jonas to the Night's Watch as well. I think we're being very merciful here, if I'm honest. Kenrick. Wow, he's got decent intrigue. Almost seems a waste to send him to the Night's Watch. He's a riverman. But we will. We will banish him to the Night's Watch. Hopefully they'll be useful for the Night's Watch. Lem Lemon Cloak. We will also banish him to the Night's Watch. See, they, people cannot say that Tommin, the king on the Iron Throne, did not do his part for the Night's Watch. They will banish you to the Night's Watch as well, Sir Simon. Sir Simon. Banish to the Night's Watch. And Forest of Mir. Even though you probably would be quite useful, we will banish Forest to the Night's Watch. Hopefully the wall doesn't fall. It probably will, but hopefully it doesn't. And then we've got Gendra, who I'm not sure. I just kind of... I can't bring myself to send him away. <laughs> Obviously Horace of House Redwind will keep you for now. Harry and Lord Carstart will keep you for now. I really want to be able to send the prisoners from the twins. Demand all the prisoners are sent here. But it's not allowing us to do that. Daenerys Targaryen has had regular flagship added to her treasury. I am a bit worried about what Daenerys is up to. Right, our 2,000 men. Recently, I've noticed a pitiful state of my mother, Lady Paramount Cersei. I've just been informed that the cause of her aches and fatigue is a case of the flu. Call for the court physician at once. Right, let's go and start sieging some of these lands in the Stormlands. We'll just take our 2,000 men. I'm not going to call my men up until I need to. Grand Mace Pycelle has been tutoring me lately, and I hate it. Learning from scrolls and listening to his lectures bore me. I want to go outside. Lose one diploma, sir. Well, that's not good. Can we... Well, Marjorie's our guardian. My young courtier has finished his education in military strategy and command. It seems he has learned all the basic skills required. A dutiful commander, Sir Gendry the Bull. Let's put in house arrest for now. And we'll we'll decide what to do for the next episode. You guys can help me decide what we should do with Gendra. He is our half brother after all. I feel guilty sending him away sending him away. <laughs> right. Yep, let's march down onto the Stormlands. We've also got other lords. Oh, the Lannisters are already going straight for uh, Storm's End by the looks of it. The Lannister departure. Where I don't know where the Arryns are sailing off to, but they're sailing off to somewhere. Lord Freehold, hold off his star of marines, has been fed to Daenerys' dragon, so she's really uh, going for it. Over in the east, Greyjoys look like they're up to summit. The Arryns are still amassing their strength. It's a shame that we can't see what's going on up north. Doesn't look like the wall's fallen, though, so that's good. The knights, the uh, wildlings haven't even fallen yet, which is great. Two different wildling factions there. Right, yes, we'll just get this area under siege. Not going to call up any of our banners till I need to. Lord Piper and Lord Bracken are on their way. The Paps army's on its way to help. The Witch Isle army's on its way to help. Looks like some are marching north, some are marching south. But yeah, we'll get we'll get these lands under siege. The land there, sieging Storm's End. Yeah, they're going to be able to siege that, so we'll leave them to it while we siege... Um, where are we sieging? Felwood. Yes, we'll, we'll do that. That's fine. Let's forward things along. Oh yeah, at the end of the last episode, don't forget, we found out that Marjorie was pregnant. And obviously it's not Tommins. Your great uncle, Lord Kevin Lannister, has died. And now it falls for you to decide whether to make a funeral a big special event or just keep it a small and private one. My great uncle deserves to be honoured with a funeral. Just the Lannister family will be invited. All of the King's Court. My vassals and courts will honour the family funeral. All lords and ladies of the realm. Um, all the King's Court. That will do for now. Your wisdom and mercy legendary. I have been appointed as your regent. Okay, so Marjorie is now in charge. So now we've got to play as though Marjorie is in charge. That's not good. That's going to give the Tyrells quite a bit of power. The invitations have been sent to the Lords and Lady of the Realm to come to the funeral. It's time to prepare the feast and the funeral itself. The guests will arrive soon. So 
I like to role play. Obviously, I like to try and play in character. And we know Tommen is going to be easily manipulated by Marjorie. He's very easily manipulated by Marjorie. The best part about preparing a feast is deciding what food stuff to serve. I must purchase venison boar and duck spices, wine and ale, honey for the desserts, cheeses, and perhaps even a swan or a peacock. I will spend lavishly on food. One thing we probably should do is go and get uh, Dragonstone under siege, to be honest. So let's call up our 49 ships. And we've got 4,000 men there. That's more than enough. Who should we put in control of taking back Dragonstone? I want Adam Marbrand to be in charge of that, along with, yeah, whoever you are, and Bron. Yes, Bron, I would like, I charge you with Sir Marbrand of taking back Dragonstone in the name of the king. Where is Loris then? Where actually is Loris? Sir Loris of the King's Guard, Master at Arms of the King's Guard. So why have I not been allowed to do anything with him? That's interesting. Right, yes, yeah, so we'll send that force of 4,000 men to go and retake Dragonstone. How many defenders is Dragonstone going to have, though? That could be a warrior. Let's dock the men and see if we have enough. The guards drag Catling up from her cell and throw her at your feet. I've come for justice, she says. By right of birth and blood, I demand a trial by combat. You have that right. I will select someone to stand for his king. Sir Robert Strong will fight bravely. I can't see whoever it is beating Sir Robert. Sir Robert steps forward. I'll stand for you, your grace. Well, he didn't say that, did he? Because he can't talk. Catling has been defeated at the hands of Sir Robert. Her final plan fell. Oh, did she actually fight herself? Okay. That's interesting. The gods are in my favour. Well done, Robert Strong. Catelyn has been found to be guilty by the gods. What punishment shall she receive? The Lord dictates the council must decide your fate. She stays here as my guest. See, but she's not actually stated as who she is. So is she worth keeping as a guest? I kind of want to keep her around just out of interest. As the council has the right to decide on all justice matters, Catelyn will be kept imprisoned. You may try and execute exile or release them by a normal right-click interaction. Catelyn shall be sent back to the dungeon. She was, yeah, so she'll be put under house arrest then. We may as well do that. Sir Janos Slint has arrived at your court. Is that the Janos Slint? Yes, it is. What, what are you doing here? You're meant to be at the Night's Watch. I don't understand why you're back in our court and not at the Night's Watch. Let the feasting commence. Lord Paramount stand at the Imperial... Did that just say that Tyrion was here as part of the Lannister family? Because I'm sure i just seen Tyrion. Now apparently he's over there in Pentos, but I'm sure it just said that he was at the funeral. I'm sure it was his face. Okay, 4,000 men is enough to siege Dragonstone, so that's perfect. We'll leave them there to do that. The funeral. As the Silent Sisters finish the preparations of the deceased, the body of Kevin is brought to the local sept and laid atop the altar at its centre. Canopy jars of Orient design are placed at the feet of the dead and the eldest child places the death stones upon the closed eyes of the deceased. One by one, those closest to the departed in life make their way into the sept and speak their goodbyes, shed their mournful tears and pray to the seven for the dead as the day winds down and the glass goodbye is said, the body is carried by kin along the ground lied streets to its final resting place. As sun fades away, a great feast is held and those who knew the dead recount stories of the life and deeds of the lost. And so it is done. Okay, so the funeral is sorted. My courtier, Sir Brendan Blackwood, has expressed a desire to get married. I will find him someone nice. Right, we need to find him a wife, don't we? We... Ah, I could marry him to the phrase to, to reward the phrase. Or we could marry him to a Tyrell if there's a Tyrell. Is there a... Is there a Tyrell? I could see Marjorie maybe getting involved with that and marrying him off to a Tyrell, so... Let's have a look. Mace, do you have siblings? Yes, you do. One who is married to Sir John of Dustonbury and one is married to Lord Paxter of the Arbor. Does he have a daughter? Yes, he does, but she's already married to Oliver Oakheart. Right, so let's go back to uh, Mance, uh, Mace. Sorry. Is there any more Tyrells? Sibylins? Oh, yeah, these are all still alive. Master Gorman? No, he's a Maester. 
What about you, Lord Garth the Gross? Lord Garth, the ah yes, he's the one who, is he the Master of Coin? The one that gets put as Master of Coin. Well, the one that uh, Mace wants as Master of Coin. He's got two sons, Garnet Flower, oh they're both bastards though, so that's, a n and they're sons anyway, so it doesn't matter. Lord Morwen of the Reach, do you have a, you have a son, Leo the Laser and Lufa Tyrell. Lufa Tyrell has a daughter, she's, tw he's tw she's 26 and married. Eleanor Tyrell, married. Bloody hell, they're all married, aren't they? Uh, I don't know what we'll do then with him. Who do we marry him to? There isn't any Lannisters to marry him to. Could marry him to a Frey to help them keep their um, control over the Riverlands, but I don't really want to give them too much power. I, wanted, I was going to marry him to a bloody Tyrell, but we could reward... Another lady of the... What about Lord Tarla? He's, he's got daughters, hasn't he? Are they all married off? No, she's not married off. Sansara Tarla. Samantha Tarly isn't either. Aniva's... Oh, Tala Tarly is to a Redwin. So, Samantha Tarly or Sansara Tarly. Well, she's definitely got the better traits. But Samantha Tarly is... Well, she's only a year older. Let's go with Sansara Tarly. Then let's arrange a betrothal... Uh, well, arrange a marriage between her... And Lord Brynden Blackwood. That's a pretty good marriage, I think. A little matchmaking here. Brynden Blackwood. It's a no anyway. Samantha Tarly? No, not interested. Maybe it's because he's of the old gods, but no, not interested. Right, let's just go for a fray. The frays are happy to marry anybody. Let's have a look. Siblings, he's not going to. So let's look at his father, and then his father, and then his father. Right, children. Let's have a look at some of the... Frey women. Who have we got? Arwen Frey. Married. Rosalind Frey. Obviously married. Arwen Frey. Uh, Sir Penwin Frey. She's too old and she's betrothed to a 14 year old. Okay, that seems a bit unfair on the poor lad. Okay, Lord Edwin. Do you have any sister? No, you do have a daughter who is 10. Hmm, could arrange a betrothal there. It'll get you some land. So let's, yeah, let's arrange a betrothal between her and Lord Blackwood then. I don't know why I'm putting so much effort into this marriage. And it's a no anyway. He's the heir. He's the bloody heir of uh, Raventree Hall. Why does no one want to marry him? And I'm still, I don't understand why... Um, Janos slint his back, how he's found his way back. I don't understand that. Oh. Could marry him to a Bracken. <laughs> that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Try and... That, that would be very interesting to try and uh, make them get along better. Bess Bracken is already betrothed. Alisane Bracken, 21. Arrange, betray, arrange marriage between you and Blackwood. Try and keep peace in the Riverlands by doing so. No, not interested. Catelyn Brecken. Yes, so that one he'll go for. Okay, so we'll do that. That will hopefully bring peace in the Riverlands between Bracken and Blackwood. We can hope. Your wisdom and mercenary legendary I've been appointed as your regent. Oh, Grand Maester Pycelle is now our regent. What happened to Marjorie being our regent? May you live in harmony and contempt. I accept your suggestion, Sir Brendan and Catelyn get married. Perfect. Catelyn Brecken has arrived at your court. Right, how are the sieges going down here? We've got 5,000 men, so we've had a lot of men join us, which is awesome. We've got a lot of men down here. It's a small Stannis army here. Your Grace, I will honour my alliance and take up arms to defend the realm against the Iron Throne's enemies. The army of Sweet Point Sounds will join you as soon as it is possible. Regards, Lord Voltris Sunglass. Okay, so he's come back home from exile. Excellent. Sunglasses are coming to... Oh, they're going to get straight into a war with the masses. So it's only a small army, though. Edwin Frey is now known as Son of the Stranger. Interesting. The dishonourable Sir Bonu has failed to answer my calls to arms. He should suffer the consequences. Suffer the consequences. Okay, we've nearly got this siege. A daughter was born to King Tommen of the Iron Throne and Queen Marjorie of the Iron Throne named Janora Stone. Ah, Stone. Interesting. Marjorie has borne the child of another man. I cannot believe this betrayal. Sir Leo Tyrell. So why has it got the bastard name Stone? Woe is me. That's not good, though, is it, for the Queen of the Iron Throne to father a bastard? That's not... That's not... 
Not good at all. Not good in the slightest. Janora Lannister. No, she's not having my name. She's oh, nothing to do with us. One of your jellies is brought where from the cells. He says your captain, Lord Harry Carter, was perfectly set free during the night by a small band of men. In their desperate escape from the castle, one of them was captured, and after questioning revealed, they were in the employ of Adara Carstark. Incompetent fools. Well, that's not good, is it, that the Carstark Lord has escaped back home? We can't do anything about it either for now, but he is fighting against Stannis, so it's not the end of the world, is it? It's helping us out in the long run. Right, here's a Stannis army. We will crush that once we finish this siege here. Your Grace, I will honour my allegiance. Okay, awesome. Another Lord coming to our aid. We should be able to beat Stannis soon, which actually breaks my heart because I love Stannis. I don't want to see Tommen win against him, but... That's what we've got to do for this playthrough. These are the people I grow up with. I feel we bonded over the years. Garrett Page, Lila Slint, Mallant Gramington, and Matthew Gramington. Grew up together. Okay, awesome. It's interesting. Do we have any friends? No, not really. Siege of Felwood, awesome. Magnus Sigorn is declared war against the tyranny of Lord Commander Jon Snow of the Lord Commander. What? Okay, that's an interesting one. Right, we've managed to siege that. That was no problem at all. Yeah, we'll do that over siege as well. Caesar. Thalanus is a siege in uh, Storm's End for us too, which is great. Still siege in Dragonstone, which could take a little while. Got minus gold, but not really much that we can do about that at the minute. John Stark has had Fire Sword added to their treasurer. Okay, how did you get that, my friend? Wow, you've got a few rivals, haven't you? Sir Janus Slint, Lord Ramsay of the North, Sir Alice of Fawn. You have got some friends, though, so. And marriage ties. Sir Harold, married to Sansa. Okay, interesting. Got my eye on you, little finger. Marcella seems very nice. Maybe I should ask her if she wants to play. I'll wait a little. She could come to me. Yes, we should play, become close friends. Yeah, we want to be close friends of our sister. Of course, definitely. Is she already scarred, by the way, yet, our sister? Yes, disfigured. So she loses her, uh, it's her ear, isn't it, she loses, I think. I believe it's her ear. We'll just assault that, it's only 100 defenders. That gets that under our control. He's just up the country. Right, it's Targaryen army there. We'll try and stay away from that for now. Rickon Stark was long thought to have been murdered by Freon Greyjoy, but Stannis Baratheon and Lord Mandy claim to have found him, rescued by the smuggler Davos Seaworth. They now name him Lord of Winterfell. Interesting. Okay, so that means the Mandalys are now going to join Stannis, which they have, as well as a lot of other areas. So Stannis could win his war in the north, so we need to make sure that we take him out down south before he wins that war in the north. Right, let's go for Grand View next. And we'll take care of that quickly. Still working hard at Siege of Dragonstone. Wow, 13,000 Vale men. Oh no, it's only some Vale men. 13,000 other men on their way down. Lord Manfred of Blackhaven has declared Blackhaven war for Sir Harland's claim on the Stormlands. Okay, awesome. So the D Durandans have now declared uh, a war on Stannis. So that's good. That's going to make it even harder for him. Awesome, collected some decent tax. The dishonourable Lord Elden S1 has failed to answer my call to arm. He was sure, well, obviously he's going to turn his down. Well, yeah, he's going to go with Stannis, isn't he? Florence is still in charge there. So we need to make sure that we do give that land to uh, Garland once this war is over, as that is meant to go to Garland Tyrell, isn't it? He's meant to get the Florent lands as a gift for his hard work in the uh, Battle of King's Landing. Okay, we've been joined by more men, which has made it worse, really, in the long run, because we were sieging it perfectly fine. But now that we've had more men turn up, it's making the supply line not good enough. Okay, we're sieging this pretty quickly, though, under the uh, command of Jamie. One child lack an educational focus. Marcella. I thought I'd already give you an educational focus. Go with stewardship, please. I thought we'd already done that in the last episode. Okay, we've got 8,000 men now. Oh, well, at least it means we're going to see Dragonstone pretty quickly by the looks of it. I wish this Vale army would do something rather than going back and forth and back and forth over there. Right, 5,000 men. Yeah, we're doing that siege. Easily enough, how is uh, 
the Tyrells getting on against the Iron Islands. It looks like nothing's really happened. At the age of 18, Walder Frey. Walder the Fat died under suspicious circumstances. Interesting. After giving a Bolton heir, the dishonourable Lord Selwyn Tarvis failed to answer my call. Okay. Oh. He's uh, answered the call of House Durandon, though, so in the long run it is helping us out, really, isn't it? Because he's still going to be fighting against Stannis. Philip of Moorland, Peasant Revolt, declared Peasant Revolt for Moorland on Lady Paramount Cersei of the Westerlands. I'm sure you can handle that, Cersei. Okay, we've almost sieged Dragonstone now, which is perfect. Siege of Grandview, perfect. So, yeah, we'll attempt an assault. Easy. No point rushing, we can grind the men down easy enough. One afternoon, your wife comes over to you and begs a private word. She asks that you allow her to take one of her serving girls as her handmaid, and she says that she becomes very fond of her and believes she would serve well, and the two of them would get along wonderfully. Okay, who is it? Melanie. As long as you both get along, I don't see why not. Yeah, sure. Go for it. Salt, an easy victory. I need more time to raise funds. I don't have any money. I'm at war. Victory, Siege of Dragonstone. Awesome. We've got Dragonstone under our control. Your Grace, I believe Sir Horace Redwin has been in your custody for too long. I accept your offer because you're going to give us a hell of a lot of money. And I don't really understand why we've still got him in our custody anyway. We don't need to have him in our custody. What did that just say that... Uh... John had died. Oh, Elena, Elena Redwin's died. I'm sure that just said that John had... Uh... Oh, no, he's not died. He's gone into hiding. Well, that's not good, is it? When the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch goes into... Oh, winter is spreading. It's not good news. Not good at all. Definitely not good. Not good for us either, to be honest. Magnus Sigan accepted Lord Commander Jon Snow's peace offer. Right, let's assault this once more. Easy victory. We'll stay away from that Durandan armor. Let's... Let's march on Storm's End. Why not? How's it going over on Dragonstone? Oh, easy. An easy siege to do. Victory. Siege of Dragonstone. You should suffer the conflict. Okay. Assault again. Okay. Magor Sighorn was beheaded. Not good. A delegation from the Ironbrank of Bravos, led by Keyholder Larazis, has arrived in King's Landing. He is seeking a resolution to the unpaid debt and is offering a compromise which he says will satisfy both parties. This would seem fair, I accept. The loan is extended by three years for compensation paid to the Iron Brank. 30 gold. The interest rate is increased by 10%. I may satisfy you, but not me. Guards seize this man. Well, that wouldn't be good. Uh, extended by... We're going to have to go with that one, aren't we, then? Until we can afford to raise some funds. Let's... Let's get back on the ship with those men and bring them home. We don't need... Them. Whoa! Stannis' army is marching south very fast with a lot of men. Does that mean he's has he won the war in the north? No, still at war with them in the north. Maybe because all the Mandalays and such have raised their banners. He's thought, oh, I can march south now and win this war. We're going to beat that Florent army, which is good. We're going to have to bring those men on the ships down to Storm's End instead now then, aren't we? Let's get them down to Storm's End quickly because that is a big unit of men coming down from... Stannis, so we're going to need those reinforcements to help us out. Hopefully Stannis will go for the Durandans instead, though. Okay, there's 3,000 Stannis men there retreating. Right, dock the men quickly at Storm's End. We've got 6,500 men plus about 4,000. Okay, the High Septon has died. That's good. I'm glad that the High Sparrow is dead because he was worrying. Oh, he's also got the Targaryen army down here to worry about. Aha! Yes! Offer peace. Enforce demands. Yes. The Stannis Baratheon's war for the Iron Throne has ended. King Tommen of the Iron Throne won. It's a shame that it's so easy to win that because... Just forcing him to surrender and then capturing him even though he isn't here. I know it's just the way the game works, but it is a shame. Can I disband the army here? Okay, right. Uh, let's take the ship. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll wait for this to thingy over, and then we'll give Storm's End to someone new. Lord Paramount made to the Reacher due to the title Lordship of Brywall to keep from the Florent. Yeah, but shouldn't that go to, um, is it going to go to Garland Tyrell? I hope it does. Of Bl of Meadows, okay. Uh, bend the knee, bend the knee, bend the knee, and we'll take hostages from you all. 
King Aegon of Aegon's Host has declared King Aegon of Aegon's Host war for the Iron Throne on King Tommen of the Iron Throne. Tommen Lannister, I declare myself to be the true-born progeny of Rhaegar Targaryen, son of the unjustly disposed King Aerys by the right of birth and blood. As last scorn of House Targaryen, I do lay claim to the Iron Throne and hence declare war. Signed, Aegon of House Targaryen, the sixth of his, his, sixth of his name, King of the Andals, the Roiner, and the First Men, and Lord of the Seven Kingdoms. Usurper. The Iron Friend is in a state of war. We should send ravens to the great lord. They will surely honour their obligation. Your grace, I will honour my alliance. So the Veil are coming to our aid, which is great. The Masses, I will allow you to bend the knee if you give me a hostage. The war has been won. The rebel army has been crushed by your brave loyalist. Lord Paramount Stannis Baratheon, one of the traitors, has been brought before you to hear judgment. Send him to the dungeon, obviously. Right. So, we will be taking Storm's End. We've only got a 1,000 soldiers there now, though. We'll dock those and see how many we've got, because that is a big Targaryen host there. Has Mace gave Brightwater to his son? No, he's not. Can you please give that to Garland? Okay, the Vances are coming to our aid. My prisoner, Lord Parents, Mount Stannis Baratheon, is complaining. Let him rot. I don't think they're going to be too pleased with him, are they? Your Grace, I will honour my alliance and take up. Okay, perfect. Idle council members. Ah, yes, we need you to go somewhere else now, don't we? Um, hmm. I'll think of something for you to do. But now at least we've claimed that. We will revoke Kingdom of the Storm. Why can't we do that? Title cannot be the target or justification for any ongoing... Ah, because they're already at war. Yes, but that means he'll get the Stormlands, and I do not want him to have the Stormlands. Littlefinger has declared Riverman War. Okay. I want to take this title away from him. Okay, I can take Dragonstone away. Lordship of, I can take the Lordship of Storm's End away. We'll take the Lordship of Storm's End then. That is ours. And we will take the High Lordship of Dragonstone away. It's going to upset other vassals by 15. Why is... I don't care, to be honest. Revoke title, High Lordship of Shipbreakers Bay. And, yeah, it's definitely not going to let us take the Kingdom of the Stormlands away. We'll wait for all those titles to be ours. And then we can gift them to loyal Lannister men. Loyal men. Why have we not got the High Lordship of there? They at right. Who do we give Storm's End to? We'll decide in the next episode, and we'll take down Aegon in the next episode, I think, as well, guys. So well, let me think. Let me know who you think we should give Dragonstone and Storm's End to. For now, I will end this episode. As I said, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you very soon for my next video.